the BBC have made a complete uh, a laughing stock of themselves in, in the last 24 hours. Basically, what happened is they, uh, they didn't fire, but they told um, uh, Gary Lineker, who's uh, the highest uh, paid uh, pundit that they have, to uh, tone back his comments on Twitter because he criticized the migrant policy that the Tories are trying to push through, okay? And he, Gary Lineker hosts Match of the Day. He, basically, if you don't know him, he used to play for uh, uh, the England team. Uh, he scored a lot of goals during the World Cup. Uh, so this, this, this is a couple of years before I was born. And after, you know, being a striker, he basically uh, went on, uh, like many in his field, to become a pundit or a journalist or to, to uh, do sports commentary. And he, he's, he's a household name in England, right? household name so he hosts match of the day and on saturday so in the last 24 hours the entire day no host for match of the day uh, of uh, football focus nothing everybody walked out because they tried sidelining him everybody I'm, I'm i'm talking everybody who does sports and football so embarrassing let me show you what what he tweeted that that upset them okay so um this is, this is his tweet. He said that there is no huge influx, and he's talking about uh, uh, migrants. Um, he says, we take far fewer refugees uh, than other major European countries. You see, that's the thing uh, that I always complain about. The government, they, they're calling this migrant policy. It's not about migrants, it's about refugees. And I'm, I'm glad he says that. So he says, this is just an immeasurably cruel policy directed at the most vulnerable people in language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 1930s. And I'm out of order. That's it. That that was that was the tweet. So basically, I, I um, you know, I understand where he's coming from, but he made a fatal mistake. He made a fatal mistake. He he brought up the the 1930s Germany comparison, and I and why do I say fatal mistake? Because now for for the the you know the the duration of the last days, he's given everybody uh, ammunition. To focus on him instead of the disgusting um, uh, bill that they're trying to push through, right? So this is this is Swella Braverman. She's the Home Secretary. Let me show you her video, and then I'll I'll show you how crazy this stuff is. This this uh, anti-refugee bill. So here's here's this announcement. Last year, over forty-five thousand people made the unsafe, unnecessary, and illegal journey across the channel. Our it's not illegal. Asylum system has been overwhelmed. We're now spending almost seven million pounds a day. Really, you spend a lot more bombing Iraq day on hotels. Stopping the boats is one of the five promises the Prime Minister has made to the British people, and it's my top priority. That's why today I'm announcing a new illegal migration bill to do exactly that. The Prime Minister and I have been working flat out. Does this woman have no shame? Have this woman no shame? This is a children of, of immigrants, not refugees, immigrants. And now she's basically shutting the gate behind her and saying, screw all of you. But, let, but let's, let's tell the truth and let's stick to the, to the facts. She is talking about people who are crossing the English Channel. So between uh, uh, France and, and the United Kingdom. And she's saying these are illegal migrants. The Home Office, that's her department. She is the head of the Home Office. The Home Office, on their own website, say that most of the people who cross the English Channel are, are approved as refugees. That means they have made an, a, an asylum claim, they've been assessed individually, every single one of them, and then given refugee status. That, it's not my opinion. It's the, on the Home Office own goddamn website. You know those boring hearings, they were 10 hours long and the whole transcript is there. I, I watched them and went through. The own... Their own website. So, this, this new bill that she's doing, the difference is that if you come to the UK, you're not even given the opportunity to make an asylum application. They see you, you're scooped up and deported. That's it. I mean, th this is insanity. Like, what, what, if, what if you're a British citizen? What if you went on a fishing trip? What if it's a class of people who went on a fishing trip? <laughs> You're not even going to give them time to prove who they are. Like, just deport it. That's it. This is insanity. There's, like, no legal process. Nothing. And on the... This is page one of her own bill. This is on the first page. Look what it says. The first goddamn page, I swear to God. 
it says here, this is, this is Braverman, the same woman, right? The Home Secretary. She says, I am unable to make a statement that in my view, the provisions of the illegal migration bill are compatible with the convention rights, but the government nevertheless wishes the House to proceed with the bill. So she's saying on the first page that this bill is incompatible with the European Convention on Human Rights, but the government should still uh, ram it through Parliament anyway. What more do you want me to say, man? What, what do you want me to say? So she, she wants to scoop people up who we know most of them are refugees and then deport them either to Rwanda. You remember that's her, that's her plan, send them to Rwanda or send them to the next safe country. I mean, th this is what we should be focusing on, man. This is the, the content, the meat. The meat is what we should be focusing on. The bill. Uh, not, not Gary Lineker. They, they want you to focus on Gary Lineker. Oh, the BBC are really mad at him. You know, again, I, I'll get... Let me just say a few words. The reason that they're, they're mad at him is they're saying he breached the rules of impartiality, right? The BBC are suddenly impartial and they care about impartiality. Who, sw who believes this joke, man? Go, go watch the BBC's coverage on Yemen. Go watch their coverage on Syria. Go watch the BBC's coverage on Iraq, on Afghanistan, on Ukraine, and then tell me that they have impartiality. The, the BBC, li literally during wartime, w would send out coded messages. And again, I'm not saying it shouldn't have necessarily, but you know, because the enemy was Nazi Germany, but the BBC was su is such an arm of the state, is what I'm trying to explain to you, that they used to send out coded messages for uh, uh, our, our spies and, and underground operatives in Europe, right? So this, this is, uh, it, you, you've got basically, uh, you would have under... Um, uh, the Special Operations Executive, the SOE, which was, uh, um, you know, I, I don't want to get into the security state of Britain, but basically now you only hear about MI6 and MI5. But before that, you had the SOE, which, which doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. So that's how, that's how much the, the BBC is intertwined with the government, not to mention that the, that the BBC is funded by the taxpayer, right? I mean, don't, don't come here and tell us about, oh, you have to respect impartiality. This guy, Gary Lineker, is a sports pundit, right? He does sports, and he said this on his Twitter account. It's not like he waited until they were live on Match of the Day, and then inst instead of talking about, you know, Everton, he's saying, well, this migrant bill is really something. <laughs> Come on, man. Let me, let me show you this, uh, this question. Somebody asked the um, Director General of the BBC if, if Lineker had said something else, if he had supported the bill, would you have fired him? Well, he didn't get fired, but still, he, they, they've, uh, they've tried to sideline him. Look at this answer. A particular to party. To say, I support your migrant policy. I back it, it's brilliant. He would be taking an opinion. Would you have removed him from that? From the it, air, if I, I'm, had I, I, I'm, I'm not going to go through, but, but it's a I'm not going to go though. through all the hypotheticals of the past. What I'm going to say, what, what, what I would say very clearly. The non-answer, right? <laughs> the non-answer. Uh, just, just quickly again, just to bring you up to speed, look at this, man. Lineker was suspended, and he, and he didn't come in for, for today, so uh, final score and football focus were pulled from BBC One. Uh, the late-night match of the day program was trimmed to 20 minutes with no opening theme tune, no pundits, no commentary, uh, and it's still not clear match of the day two will go ahead uh, tomorrow on Sunday after host Mac, uh, Mark Chapman did not host Radio 5 Live Sport on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is so embarrassing, man. They thought they, they pulled a number on him, and then everybody was like, no, fuck you, we're not hosting the, pro, the, the sports programs. There's, the, there's no sport on radio or TV. Screw you. <laughs> man, you love to see it. You love to see it. It's so good, man. It's so good. Now, look, let, let, um, let me tell you something about his comments real quickly. I, I don't know if, if the, the 1930s Germany comparison is... Uh, is the right way to go about this. Now, let me, let me be clear on that, because you're going to have people who say that, yes, it is, it's very clear, and then others who say, well, um, uh, no, he's, he's uh, just attacking the government and blah, blah, blah. I agree with Gary. I am just saying that he should have been a bit more nuanced, because he, he unnecessarily gave all these, these scumbags and Swella Braverman and the BBC an opportunity to attack him and to, to, to take attention away from the issue. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, Swella Braverman 
she does use language like that. If you go, if you go look at how she's spoken in Parliament about, um, again, I, 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 I keep, I hate that she, uh, uh, when we're talking about refugees, they put in the word migrant to make it seem like it's people who've just, you know, they've just suddenly wandered off, uh, uh, you know, thousands of miles because they want to have a nice flat in London or some shit. But she's been in Parliament talking about refugees and saying it, it's an invasion, right? So I don't know if that's the the threshold for qualifying as 1930s Germany, because if you look at uh, 1930s Germany with the Nuremberg laws and, and how they were treating minorities, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's uh, quite a threshold that we're talking about, right? And that doesn't excuse Braverman. Uh, I'm just saying Gary should have done something a bit more nuanced. But again, you know, he's, he's free to speak his mind and the, the, the intent is true and correct uh, and is genuine and, and noble. And I think that, you know, it, it's... You, you got to think about this. This guy is the, the highest paid or the highest paid pundit or person they have at the BBC. And he's still sticking his neck out uh, for refugees. And not just with some tweet. I, I mean this seriously, right? Like having refugees at his house and all this stuff. So you, ha you have to respect him for it. And no one mentions the, the moral responsibility that the UK has. Because, you know, people who are coming to the UK, even if... Let's, let's say hypothetically, even, let's say hypothetically, all of them are not refugees. They're actually migrants who are just, you know, they're looking uh, for, for a, a better life. Oh my God, the crime. What a crime, right? In America, that's considered a, a good thing, right? You're, you're, that that um, the pursuit of happiness. But so it, let's say that they're all migrants. Okay, why are they coming to the United Kingdom? Because the United Kingdom is a rich country, allegedly, right? There's a concentration of wealth and a concentration of power. Obviously, uh, not like 100 years ago, but still. The, the British government has gone around the world hammering into people's brains, English is the best language. And that's why it's the, uh, the lingua franca now. England is the best country on earth, right? Uh, the English man, the white man is superior. Uh, England is, is everything. England is this and that. And then you're wondering why the fuck people are showing up, uh, uh, you know, in, in England and they want to come to England. It's, it's a, lo a lot of the people used to be under British rule, right? So you, you've been brainwashing them for centuries that England is the best and stealing their resources so you can make England the best and then you wonder why they want to come to England. I mean, that's ridiculous. That, that is ridiculous. The sad thing is that most of the people coming as, as refugees come from countries that the United Kingdom bombed or sanctioned. So there's a moral responsibility to help them. Then there's a legal responsibility because of the Refugee Convention, okay? So, um... What Suella Braverman is trying to do is, is completely, completely illegal. I mean, uh, e even just by, by British standards, I, I'm confused how you can just deport someone without any, you know, giving them a lawyer, having a legal proceeding. Th this is insane. The, the, the other thing is that under the Refugee Convention, the UK is, is, is an original signatory. So it's in the Refugee Convention that refugees are going to come by irregular means, right? It, it's in the text that refugees don't always come through uh, the airport, you know, or, or uh, what you would consider a, a regular mean. They might show up on a raft, like, you know, crossing the English Channel. Yes. It, it, you signed it. You signed that shit. And now you're trying to shirk your responsibility. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Come here. You signed that document. You're the Home Secretary. You have to respect that document. Either you pull out of the Refugee Convention, or you abide by the goddamn Refugee Convention. Don't come here and try to have it both ways. Do you understand that? Even if someone came by helicopter, they, they parachuted out of a goddamn a plane, they landed with a UFO, I don't care. You have to process their asylum application and assess them fairly, and if they are a refugee, you give them refugee status. It does not matter how they came. And, and, and once again, just to, prove, just to prove it wrong, most of the people coming in the boats are, are refugees by her own department's conclusion. So let me show you this now. Let me show you... Um, this was kind of funny. You had um, uh, Pierce Morgan <laughs> saying that he's, he's, in, he's making Gary Lineker's defense, and then Lineker said, I'm doomed. They were, they were saying this sarcastically. But just let me play the clip. The day star Gary Lineker, former England striker, of course, has faced down demands from MPs. He should be fired for condemning the government's migrant policy. 
Well, in response to a video of Home Secretary Suella Braverman explaining the scheme, Lineker tweeted, good heavens, this is beyond awful. It went on to say, there is no huge influx. We take far fewer refugees than other major European countries. Mm -hmm. This is just an intolerable, immeasurably cruel policy dictated at the most vulnerable people in language that is not dissimilar to that used by Germany in the 30s. And I'm out of order. It's an interesting debate, this. My view is that it's clearly incendiary, what Gary Lineker has said, and histor historically wrong, I think. There's no comparison between what this current British government is proposing to what Nazi Germany did. Gary got a bit carried away, as he tends to do. We have dinner together quite regularly, and this is what he does, and he would say the same about me. We both have strong opinions, we both believe in what we say, and we express them forcefully. But we agree to disagree. And I have no problem with Gary Lineker, a football presenter, a sports presenter, from giving his views. He's not a BBC news journalist, he's not anchoring the news at 10 or Question Time or Newsnight. He's a football presenter doing match of the day and other major sporting events. He's a celebrity and a public figure. People want to know, his eight and a half million followers want to know what he thinks about stuff. Why do we pretend that people like him exist in a sealed BBC bubble of perfect propriety where no opinions exist? I know many BBC journalists, they're all highly opinionated, but the ones that work in news understand the importance of impartiality. Who cares what Gary Lineker really says? about government policy on stuff. He's just, in the end, a football presenter. I don't mean that to denigrate him. He's very good at it. But he's not a news presenter. So it shouldn't matter to the BBC's news output what he thinks about the migrant situation. Now, if you said this on Match of the Day, then the criticism would... Right, th this is the exact point that I made. If he had said it on his own show on Match of the Day, maybe you could, um, you know, you, you could tell him to tone things down and because he's not being impartial quote unquote i i i'm again i'm struggling with this a lot because the bbc are are, are not impartial they're never impartial it's such a joke to, to pretend they even are i want to just show you very quickly um the guardian put together a list of of people on the bbc who uh have done things far worse than him and they they you know we're given a slap on the wrist the worst one i think was was um this guy called called sugar right um lord sugar he posted a picture of jeremy corbyn in a car with hitler right basically saying that he's he's such an anti-semite that he he's he's uh, equal to hitler which is i mean okay i'm not even gonna begin to unpack that one but he that's what he did he went on twitter and he he's he's got his own show on the bbc right so he posted a picture of um uh, of Corbyn with Hitler, and and nothing happened to him. That's it. Is it gone? I don't know if it's actually gone. Yeah, it's, he deleted it anyway. And it was, he was fine. Here's another example. I'll give you another example. This is from from uh, Nadia Hussain, who won the Great British Bake Off, um, and she became a popular TV chef hosting shows, including Nadia's family favorites. In 2018, she posted a tweet calling Theresa May a monster, a quote unquote. Actually, <laughs> without the, qu the quotation marks, uh, for, for ordering an airstrike in Syria. She quickly deleted it and the BBC brushed off the matter saying she was not a BBC staff member and her personal social media accounts are not connected to her work as a BBC presenter. First of all, why did you delete that, Nadia? Stand up. Stand up. Come on, stand up straight. Don't let them win. Don't, don't let them get one over you. You, you. What you tweeted is right. Don't give in to the British establishment. Come on. In any case, you can see how there was no, there was no problem with that or with the picture with Corbyn uh, next to Hitler. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. I'd say one more thing. Gary Lineker is, is a freelancer. So um, I, I don't know. There's, I didn't know there's any clause about what he's allowed to post on social media. He's not even technically an employee at the BBC. And, um, you know, now they're saying, I, I was reading in the paper that they're going to be uh, talking with him about his social media uh, conduct. I mean, this is such crappy behavior. 